great great thank you very much for, for that intro um just to kick this off and taking the cue from what you just shared working across 54 countries and your vast experience supporting teams and organizations what would be the key takeaway points for leaders that you the emerging trends in in how leadership has changed from a personal level to organizational leadership levels, maybe in the public or private domain, whichever one you like. What would be the um, emerging trends that you see that leaders should pay attention to? Well, I think, uh, you know, um, I can, there, there are a couple of things that are really important. You know, I don't know whether you can say they're emerging, but they've certainly become more prevalent. Um, it's talent, talent management and, and finding the right people. You know, they talk, we talk about uh, people are your greatest asset. I know it's a wonderful cliche, but really at the end of the day, that's not right. It's the right people are your greatest asset. The wrong people are your greatest liability. So it's really important that we make sure that we headhunt the right kind of talent. And, you know, I always to executives and to the executives that I coach and work with, you can do far more with 10 of the right people than you can with 100 of the wrong people. And this is really the case. Sometimes, however, we also put the right person in the wrong job or in the wrong position. So instead of having our striker playing striker, we've got our striker playing goalkeeper. And it doesn't, <laughs> even though they might be able to play it, they don't add the kind of daddy that they'd be able to add if they were playing in the natural position. And so really it's about talent management, first of all, having the right people, finding those right people, because that's becoming even more difficult to do. We know that at the moment in America, they have 12 million jobs that they can't fill. And they can't fill them not because they aren't the people, they're just not the skills. They just don't have the skills. And the skills that we need today are very different from the skills that we required two or three or four or five years ago, as you well know. You know how it's developing, you know how it's unfolding and so on and so forth. So we're basically looking for people that have very different skill sets than we were looking for five or six or seven years ago. The professionals, the era of professionalism in terms of auditing and lawyers and the, the doctors and so on is changing vastly, as is banking. As we all know, bankers are, are sitting with this digitalization process that they're all having to go through. And so things are changing at a huge rate. So that's certainly one of the things that one has to look at. Then obviously the other one that's, that, that's, we talk about this new normal that's happened through the COVID, the advent of COVID. If you and I had been talking two years ago, we wouldn't know what COVID is all about. And so for most leaders, it came as, as a complete surprise. It was an absolute, you know, we've been dealing with digitalization. We've been dealing with gender equality. We've been dealing with uh, uh, the four generations working side by side issues and so on and so forth. But nothing has hit the world and business as harshly and as profoundly as the COVID-19 virus. And so you mentioned it. You're talking about 80% of people now looking at working from home. You know, what's been interesting in terms of that COVID-19 virus, Aiken, is that they've shown that people working from home are far more productive, but not within a virus, not within a pandemic. In fact, they're less productive within a pandemic. So what's happened is that a lot of organizations are realizing that as people start moving home in the pandemic they might still have problems of socializing being able to interact with their friends having to deal with their children at home because their children aren't going to schools etc etc when that's all fine when we don't have a pandemic and things are back to normal it's far more productive working from home than it is back in the office you don't have the stress of travel. You don't have the interruptions that you normally get. All those sort of things. So research is showing that that's something we're going to have to deal with moving forward. Um, you also tend to find that leaders spend their time a lot differently um, prior to the you know COVID, during COVID, and after COVID, and so on. 
And those are just things that we're looking at. Uh, uh, leaders having to step up during these type of crises, the Ebola crisis that you had in West Africa, especially in Liberia and Sierra Leone and places like that, and now the COVID virus. And we're going to have many more uh, going forward. And how do we step up, step up and deal with these kind of crises as they hit the organizations? And then possibly one of the most challenging aspects of modern day leadership is how do we deal with our team players who are suffering burnout? And I don't think enough leaders understand how important that really is because that burnout can lead to adrenal fatigue. And that adrenal fatigue can really cause people, and I'm not talking about COVID here, but can really cause people not to perform even though they want to perform. So these are things that leaders have to look out for and be aware of nowadays. Wow. Wow. Th thank you very much. Thank you very much. I I can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, great, great, great. <laughs> so so I, I, hear, I hear talent management being a headache. I hear skills mismatch. We're sometimes putting our strikers as goalkeepers. And that's because the skills needed for today's workforce is slightly different from what used to happen. And you know, I'm, I'm surprised, well, I'm, I'm, why should I be surprised? That you're using that analogy from the football field, which I just used in my post yesterday. That <laughs> what's your bench? What's your bench looking like? I mean, a good coach, you want to change the, the, the formation when your play isn't going the way you want. And, and then you, you look at what, what's going to, are going to tweak the game. And I love football. I won't tell you which club I support in the Premier League because then you make fun of me.